Hallelujah. Today the gospel comes from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme this morning, obstacles removed, obstacles removed. Kevin Ross was another kid in an urban context who dreamed of playing pro basketball, but Kevin was different because Kevin was good. It was not a pipe dream, but a real dream with real possibility. But Kevin had a secret. Kevin could not read. I don't mean he was a little illiterate. I don't mean he was a few grades behind. I mean Kevin could not read. Kevin was the kid that faded back in the classroom, and so the teacher after teacher passed him because he was nice. He was a good kid. And so now he's a senior in high school, and he can't read, but he's got real talent. But how is he going to get into college? Ross, Kevin Ross, took the ACT, a standardized test, for college-bound high school seniors. The average score for incoming students at the college he wanted to go to was about 23 out of a possible 36. Ross scored a 9. At first, the school refused to admit him, but Ross says the athletic department got that decision overturned. Ross was scared. In his words, he said, see my test papers. I would see them when I go in. They would be turned over on the desk. And the teacher would say, well, Kevin, that's your desk. And I'll go there, and it's already done. And all I had to do was fill my name. Put my name where they say your name and put the date. In his senior year, after three years of getting A's and B's in schools and having tests done for him, he started getting D's and F's because, you see, they had used him up. There was no more need for Kevin Ross to play on the Creighton University basketball team. According to the NCAA website, the Creighton Blue Jays graduate 100% of their white males and 30% of their black male players. Change the name and this could be any basketball player's story. There's a significant number of illiterate basketball players. This morning I want to talk about removing obstacles, but first I want to talk about what an obstacle is. Sometimes obstacles can feel large and looming. They deplete us. We rack our brains, but the answer is not in us, which is what makes the obstacle so hard in the first place. You see, obstacles are things we can't solve by ourselves, and so we find ourselves stuck trying to figure out how to resolve something when we are not equipped to deal with the situation that is before us. Obstacles feel like large stones that we are incapable of moving. Obstacle can make us or break us, and then some. 
This is where we enter the biblical text today. The ladies were headed out to the tomb to perform the final rituals on Jesus. They were thinking about the stone that would be in front of the tomb. It was a large stone, and they knew the stone would be heavy, too heavy for them to move. Even with all of them together, they could not move the stone. You see, obstacles are hard, and so they began to think about what are they going to do when they arrive at the tomb. How would they access Jesus' body? How would they get the stone out of the way? No one was going to be there, so how could they do what they had set out to do with the stone in the way? And so they begin to acknowledge they have a potential obstacle, and they did not know how to resolve it. Obstacles are hard, and they limit our ability to live our lives fully for God. Obstacles are hard. A couple of weeks ago, my mom called me and informed me that one of her sisters was in the hospital. It appears that this sister was sick. She had an obstructed colon. You know, when you eat, the body absorbs nutrients from the food, and then the waste attempts to exit the body. But when you have an obstruction, well, that's a whole nother game. She had been sick for some time, but she feared letting the doctors know just how sick she was. You see, a year ago, she had beat colon cancer, and she didn't want to call up anybody because she just wants to live. And so after not being able to bear the pain, she ended up in the ER. It's interesting what fear will do to us, how it will mess with us, how it will run amok on us. And so when she could no longer put her bay, put her fear at bay. She ended up at the hospital. But what my mother wasn't saying in all of the facts was that she was worried and that she was scared. It's funny when people talk about people, oftentimes we report all the facts, but we really don't report the essence of what's going on, and that's that I'm scared for my sister. Well, it wasn't the C word, and my aunt got the assistance she needed, and she came home this week but not without impressing upon me how hard obstacles can be. Obstacles are like obstructed colons. Obstacles are hard. No, really, obstacles are hard, and they can feel like obstructed colons. Kevin left school embarrassed, humiliated, and without a college degree, and that took a toll on his self-worth. He had never read a complete book. Kevin, under the weight of it all, barricaded himself in a downtown Chicago hotel. He said he would shoot any intruders, and he emptied the room contents onto the street, eight floors below, smashing police car and endangering lives. The objects became symbols of the people at the college he attended. They gave him $30,000 hush money, but the school never, ever accepted liability for the fact that They passed him on, and he couldn't read. Obstacles are hard. That's what makes them obstacles in the first place. They crush us. They deplete us. And they push us sometimes to the edge. Kevin found himself on the edge. The ladies were headed to the tomb. They knew they had a situation. They knew it would be impossible to move the stone, and yet they took a step. They took a step toward the tomb, knowing what they know. Chapter 64 of the Tao Te Ching says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Just one step. Just one step. Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Jesus and Salome, and this text started out early on a Sunday morning so that they might perform the rituals, and when they got to the tomb, The sisters were walking to the tomb, and even though they perceived an obstacle, they kept on taking steps in that direction. They kept on taking one step. Scripture says if you take one step, he'll take two. Sometimes all you have to do is show your faith, demonstrate your faith, jump, and Jesus will catch you. Step out on the water, and Jesus will sustain you. Reach, and Jesus will guide you. Knock, and the door opens. Call out his name, and whenever you are, wherever you are, he'll come running. One step. One step. Scripture, one step. 
I'm not a big fingernail polish person, but every summer when it gets warm and I want my toes to show, I buy fingernail polish and I paint my toes. I do it for about three months because that's all that's going to last in Chicago. And here's the thing, it's easy to put that stuff on your toes and look cute, but after a couple of weeks, you need to take it off. Not everything works in getting nail polish off. So when you go to the score, you don't want to just get any nail polish remover. This is not time to get the generic brand. You want to get the one that says super strength because you're going to need it to get the nail polish off. I just stopped by to tell you all today that Jesus is like that super strength nail polish remover. Jesus removes the stone. There are some obstacles that need that extra strength power. There are some things in our lives that needs the power of Jesus. There are some things that need the collective faith community to pray with and for us. There are some stones and obstacles and paint and stuff that is attached to you that you can't get out of, get off, or get through without the stain remover. If I can use a stereotype today, I would say, or liken Jesus to crazy parents. Have you ever noticed that parents are crazy when it comes to their kids? No, no, it's, it's really real. Really, when I was younger and I had no kids, a friend of mine had kids and she invited me to the toddler birthday party. And there's all these little toddlers running around and their parents are running around, obsessing around them. And one little kid pushed another and my golly, that mother was on it. And she was scolding the other toddler. And I was looking for the parent of the other toddler, like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, my God, parents are crazy. No, no, really. <laughs> when it comes to their kids, parents are crazy. So a few of my friends were enraged when this recent Netflix documentary came out, Operation Varsity Blue, the college admission scandal, which showcased these rich parents paying thousands and millions of dollars to get their kids in Ivy League schools. And I'm like, well, I don't condone people using their privilege to get into school, but I understand it because parents are crazy. They'll do anything for their kids. Parents are crazy, and so I liken Jesus to a crazy parent. Jesus would do anything for us. If you've dealt with parents, they'll do anything for little Johnny or little Malcolm. They'll do anything for Susie or Kiki. And you've got to tread lightly when you're dealing with parents because they're not wrapped too tight in the head. And isn't that so with our Jesus? Isn't Jesus kind of a little bit crazy? Refusing to come down off the cross, refusing to use his power to stroke his ego, going all the way and rising today, and then check it out, removing the stone. Because he's like a crazy parent, going all out for us. What's standing between you and greatness? What are your obstacles? I mean, when the camera's off and no one's looking, and when you sit all alone, what are your demons? What are your struggles? What have you been carrying for way too long? What are the obstacles that are not only internal but external in our society? What are those things that threaten to undo you? What are your, what are your obstacles? Jesus came from heaven to earth, southwest bound, no luggage, free luggage needed because he had no baggage to bring. The spirit dealer, the heart protector, the soul defender, anything threatening, lurking out there, he had our backs. The alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the joy increase of the freedom release of the stone that the builders rejected had become the cornerstone, the wine changer, the life giver, the healer, the messenger, the inviter, our refuge in time of neater. Keeper of creation and creator of all, he is the wisdom of the wise, leader of the leaders. He is goodness and kindness and wisdom. Jesus doesn't give up on us. He is light and he is love and he is in it for the long haul. Jesus, the one that removes the stone. He always was, always is, and always will be in your corner rooting for you. 
It's a story, yes, but it's as real as your faith will allow it to be. Jesus removes obstacles. He removes big stone. He removes larger than life problems. He removes those things we cannot do by ourselves. It's beyond us, over us, and it's not under our feet at all. He is our savior, our guide, our peace, our comfort, our hope, and he wants to remove the stone. He wants to remove the obstacle from our lives, but we gotta let him, we gotta want it, and we gotta take some steps. He will never leave you, never forsake you, never mislead you, never forget you, never overlook you. When you fall, he'll lift you up. When you make mistakes, he will forgive you. When you feel weak, he's strong. When you're lost, he's your way. When you're afraid, he's your courage. When you stumble, he will steady you. When you hurt, he will heal you. When you're broken, he will mend you. And when you're blind, he will lead you. When you're hungry, he will feed you. When you face trials, he's with you. When you face hard times, he'll shield you. When you face death, he'll comfort you. And there are obstacles in your way. Jesus will remove them. Jesus is the stain remover. Jesus is the one that removes the stone. He's an equal opportunity kind of guy. Gay, straight, crooked, brown, white, pink, aging, still can't walk, differently able, mentally ill, poor, rich, waiting for the next paycheck. Jesus will remove the obstacles. And when the ladies got there, when they arrived at the tomb, when they had just taken one step after another step and another step, when they got to the tomb, they discovered, they were astonished that the tomb, that the rock, that the stone had been removed. Jesus removes stones too difficult for us to remove ourselves. And remove the stone he did. Maybe you don't have an obstacle, but there are some people in this world who have obstacles, real obstacles. And they need this resurrection Jesus to help them. I began today by talking about Kevin Ross, who was illiterate, who left school, who barricaded himself in a room. Kevin got 99 problems, he's a custodian, but today he can read. He can read for himself. No one has to tell him what's on the paper. His son plays college basketball and his son can read. He reached out to the renowned Marva Collins, whose story of educating kids on the West Side garnished national attention that called for her story to be told on film and Cicely Tyson paid that part. He went to Marva Collins. He sat in a school desk that was made for a six-year-old. And in nine months, he had jumped 11 grade levels. But the crowds were gone. But he can read. And he made sure that what happened to him did not happen to his son. And he tells his story so that others can know and so that we can fight what is done in colleges. Let us be reminded that there's nothing too hard. There's nothing too hard for our Lord. And that just as the obstacle was removed for Kevin, not saying it's not hard, obstacles can be removed for you. The good news this Easter is that Jesus removes the stone. Jesus removes those obstacles that are too hard for us to remove. Jesus removes the stone. Amen.